Good morning, everyone. I'm Rowan Crockett, Grower Services Manager for our Northern Region, and I'll be your host for this webinar, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings for our Brookstead, Clifton, Dolby West, Maloo, Milmerran and Warra sites. 2020 has certainly been a big year for everyone, and while a lot of things haven't gone to plan this year, at least we've seen some slightly better rainfall within our region, and we'll hopefully have some crops to harvest in, in the near future. This morning, you will hear updates on a variety of topics around delivering safely to your grain corp site this harvest. No doubt some of the topics discussed will lead to further questions, and you've probably noticed by now the session is equipped with a chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, you're more than welcome to put forward any questions you, you may have throughout the, the session. Uh, we have left some time at the end to, to cover off any questions which, which don't get covered by the presentations. Um, so, yeah, if you do have any questions, please please ask away. Um, if we don't get to them on this call, then we'll certainly get an appropriate person to, to give you a call following to, to discuss your query. Given it's a busy time of year, I'll aim to wrap up in under an hour. So please understand we, we may not be able to drill down into too much site-specific detail, but we'll do our best to, to give a general overview. And, and if there are any questions, as I mentioned, please, please follow them up prior to harvest. Um, to kick off our presentations this morning, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Sean Barker, our General Manager of Customer and Commercial, to say a few words. Good morning, Sean. Thanks for joining us and, and over to you. Morning, Rowan, and it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, as you said, uh, for Grain Corp, a more optimistic outlook for the winter harvest ahead, and we're all optimistic, some finishing rains uh, for the crops would be, be much appreciated um, for the winter crops, but also for the summer crop planning going on. Um, as you mentioned, 2020 has been a challenging time uh, for many people across our industry and other industries. Um, but how we've all responded to that, uh, I think, is a credit to us in the ag industry. And I'm sure whatever challenges come, um, we'll deal with them appropriately. Um, at Grain Corp, it's been a busy time for us during this period as well at a corporate level. Um, Grain Corp um, has demerged its malt business. Um, that malt business now operates as a separate listed ASX company. Um, so it allows Grain Corp to be in a strong financial position now and allows us to focus back into our core um, and that being our growers overall. So we're, we're very excited about that. A strong grain corp um, is good there for us. It allows us to continue to invest in our supply chain um, and also allows us to buy that grain, um, ensuring we're providing our, our true purpose there to growers, which is to monetize your grain overall. Um, back in, in March, when we did see some planting rains in parts of our network, um, we started our harvest um, preparedness at that point. Um, with the years of drought um, and, and a massive import program, um, we knew there'd be some challenges in, in scaling back up for the harvest coming. So um, very much from the chairman to the CEO, Robert Spurway, right through to our ground staff, it's been a big focus for us across our company and, and I'm very proud of how our teams approach that overall. Um, we knew labour um, would be challenging for us overall. I'm, I'm very pleased to say, you know, we, we've been looking for over 3,000 casuals. We've had, um, you know, nearly double that in applications and, and Brad will work through that a little bit more in detail as we go through this presentation overall. Um, machinery, we've invested in more machinery and tarps this year across our network. Um, so very pleased to see that coming online in, in time for harvest overall. Also during this period, um, our investment in our export supply chain um, has continued um, with a new site in Queensland in Yamala, um, which will be up and running for this harvest, um, which we're very proud of at Grain Corp um, in, in seeing that lower those export supply chain costs for growers. In all our preparations, um, we've had COVID happening in the background, which has thrown some challenges. But one thing hasn't changed during that time, and that's our commitment to safety and the efficiency of our sites. Um, Brad, uh, Glenn and the team and Yarko will run through some of those changes today. And we just want you to know all the decisions we've made around that have been for the safety of not only our staff, um, but you, our customers, ensuring an efficient harvest um, for everybody. 
Rowan, again, I'd just like to thank everyone for logging in. Um, as you mentioned, if there's any detailed questions, feel free to use the chat function um, or feel free to reach out after the, the Grower webinar um, if, if you want a direct conversation on that. So to everyone, wish you a safe and prosperous harvest ahead. Um, and, and yes, uh, look forward to uh, joining this meeting throughout. So thank you, Rowan. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate your time this morning and, and look forward to seeing both, both yourself and, and our new CEO, Robert, up in the region when, uh, when the borders open and, and we can uh, yeah, go for a, a look around, hopefully at some, some good summer crops in a few months' time. We look forward to it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 2020 has certainly been a year of surprises and I'm sure certain most would agree COVID-19 has been the biggest of them all. At Grain Corp, we're certainly taking the COVID situation very seriously. And I'd now like to welcome our next guest, Brad Foster, Regional Operations Manager for Queensland, to share with us his team's plan to ensure our customers and staff remain safe this harvest and that our sites remain open for deliveries. Welcome, Brad. Oh, morning. Hey, Rowan. Morning and morning to everyone. Thanks for having me. Brad, I, I guess just to start off with, can you can you just give us a few insights into the measures that your team have, has introduced to to help keep everyone safe and, and our sites open through the harvest period? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess like everyone, our business started to get affected by COVID measures in March when the original shutdown came um, across the country. So, you know, we have been working pretty hard for six months uh, around our COVID plans. We've done a lot of planning through that time. Um, the business was set, quick to set up a crisis management team. So we've really been on the front foot with it. Um, I guess luckily for Queensland in a way <laughs> that um, we've had a bit of a head start around COVID, having our sorghum harvest receivals um, through the network through the, the winter months and also the CQ winter crop um, has started to come in over the last few weeks as well. So we, we have been seeing receivals um, up in the central Queensland network. So that's given us a, a really good front foot to, to lead off with. Um, we have had contractors coming across with Sean um, just mentioning we've been investing in capital and maintenance through that period. So we've had a robust plan with cross-border health checks for those contractors who have been coming across and, again, helping us put those good systems in place. Um, additionally, we've set up seasonal health worker plans um, across the, the network as well. So, again, we've, we've had a few... Um, backpackers and casual staff assist us through that sorghum and winter crop period. Uh, so again, those those plans are built, they're in place, they've been operating for a few months now successfully. We have been audited um, by the, the Queensland government around those health plans and, and have passed uh, with flying colours every time. So we've got some really good plans in place. Uh, I guess I'd just say for any growers who do have um, properties in both northern New South Wales and Queensland or, or business opportunities and what have you that you need to attend to, um, please get in and apply for an ag, ag exemption to, to cross the border. Um, you'll require the Queensland Chief Medical Officer exemption, um, photo ID and proof of ag such as a, a property registration so if you need to uh, cross the border, please get in there and, and get that ag exemption underway. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Brad. That certainly sounds like a, a lot of work's been going on there in, in the background and, and uh, yeah, good good news that, that it doesn't seem to be impacting too much. I, I guess, yeah, next question was just if, if you'd give us a bit of insight from a grower's perspective when when you, I turn up with my first load this year, what, what changes can I expect to see at a site level? Yeah, definitely. We have made a, a few changes um, through the system, of course. Uh, as Sean just alluded to before, we, you know, our number one priority is to keep everyone safe. Um, so we've, we've put these measures in place as a result. So I'll just step you through what it'll look like to deliver a load onto site. Um, so first thing is we're going to put QR codes up around the site. So we'll have them at a number of locations, such as the entry sign, um, sample stand, Waybridge, uh, a few other points around the place. Uh, basically, it'll be like I know with my son's junior rugby, my daughter's soccer, and 
if you go to a pub, eat at a restaurant or what have you, I think QR codes are, are pretty well known around the place now. Um, to get your smartphone, scan that QR code and, and enter that you're on site. And that's for us to keep a record of, of who is on site. Um, Realise not everyone has a smartphone, so we still are going to keep a, a manual copy on site so we can um, register who has been on site through that period. Uh, so that will be set up everywhere for you to, to use to sign on uh, the, and we can keep a record of who has been on site. Uh, the next big change is a delivery advice form. Um, not new. We have had delivery advice forms across our network for a, a long period of time. The change is that we'll need one of those forms filled out for every load and every sample um, that comes in into our network. Uh, we will be providing forms on our sample stands, but we'll also have electronic copies and what have you. We can send out to you if you'd like to pre-populate those forms first. Um, it, it might make it a bit quicker for you and, you know, you can punch it into the Word document uh, so you're not writing things out all the time. You've, you've got it there pre-populated. So if you ask your, your site manager or local field merchant um, if you need those forms, where to get them, we'll make sure we get them out to you. But, again, they will be on site as well if, if you need some copies of that. Um, we will only be allowed to have st uh, staff in our sample stands and what have you. So as you deliver to site, there'll be the, the platform or what have you at the front of the sample stand, and we ask that you remain there. And that's obviously for safety and to limit contact um, between people. Uh, another big change around that is with samples. Um, if you could just drop off your sample in a zip lock bag, then uh, we'll be able to provide those results to you after that period of time. Uh, when you do deliver to site, we'll give you a sample docket at the time. Uh, warehouse for the other really big change is the only option when you deliver this year, uh, but you'll be able to transfer that grain quickly through Crop Connect or also a, a grow hotline that we're running. Um, but Yarko will touch on, on that for you as we go through the presentation, but, but certainly a big change there. Um, so basically with the sample docket, you'll go across, uh, get the gross weight on the, the weigh bridge. There'll be no need to sign any forms. We're going to limit that human contact as much as possible. Uh, the driver will, will go to the hopper. They'll show the sample docket there. We've got really big font uh, printed on the sample dockets this year. So the hopper attendant will uh, have no problem seeing that to make sure the truck is delivering into the, the right storage. And again, the hopper attendant won't be signing forms or anything. We're really limiting that uh, human contact. Uh, so from there, the truck will proceed to the tear weight and be uh, given a delivery docket. Uh, so you've got that record for the driver or, or for your operations. Um, so you'll have a sample docket and delivery docket. So that's a process. Thanks, Ron. Very good. Thanks, Brad. Look, all seems pretty practical to me. I guess the the, the obvious question, which, which I'll throw to you, is is do you see it having any impact on on turnaround times at sites? Yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? I I guess it's really unknown at this stage, and until we uh, start seeing some volume come through. But, you know, really, if, if the um, delivery advice form is filled out, pre-populated, um, it's going to the, the people at the sample stand, they're entering that data quickly and, and also at the way bridge. I really can't see why it wouldn't speed things up, and, and I think it will. Um, I guess some drivers and what have you like a, a talk at times in the sample stand and what have you, so... You know, with, without having any of that, it'll be pushing trucks through the system pretty quickly and, and I'd see it improve, if anything. Oh, some, some good news might be a, a bit of an unintended win there then. Um, yeah. Brad, I, I guess a few more questions I have got, and, and look, you, you've probably covered on, on these topics in, in your, your previous answers, but I, I just, just probably want to ask them anyway, just to, to clarify a few things where maybe they're, there has been a, a few myths floating around or, or misunderstandings. Um, pretty short and sharp questions, but but just to to rule out any any grey areas. The the first one um, was there. There was some discussion around 
drivers not being allowed to get out of their truck this year and, and as a consequence, Grain Corp staff would be unrolling tarps and, and cracking tailgates this year. Is, is that the case? Um, no, it's same as what we've been for a number of years now. Uh, we'll still be asking growers to and truck drivers to unroll tarps and open their own tailgates. Um, so there's no change there. And you now that's really on the, the back of safety. Uh, where we did, did used to open tailgates back in the days, we did have a, a lot of injuries as each um, tailgate's a, a slightly different setup and the the driver knows how that works, so uh, that's still in place. Very good. Uh, look, the, the next one that, that I have heard was was that uh, Grain Corp didn't want to be testing any grower samples this year and, and wouldn't be doing that or, or would be charging for those samples. Is is that the case, Brad? Um, no, that's not true either. It's um, same as what it has been previous years. Um, We'll test your samples for you and get the results through as soon as we can. Um, like previous years also, though, the, the receivables that we're getting at the time take precedence. So if there's a, a few trucks in the line, we'll, um, we'll keep those trucks rolling and test the grow samples as soon as we get a, a break in the line to be able to do that. Um, just to go into a little bit more detail of what I did touch on before, um, if you could please provide the samples in a disposable bag, um, a, a plastic Ziploc bag would be best, but just some kind of disposable bag. And, and that's, again, to limit the human contacts. Um, so the old, uh, you know, tin cans or ice cream containers or whatever else, um, we can't take those this year. Uh, we can't hand it back to you. So if you could provide the samples in, in one litre or one kilo, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, that's the sample size we're after. We will be providing some um, Ziploc bags and what have you at sites, but when you're bringing those samples in, um, please do it that way. And uh, also we do need the grower delivery advice for those samples as well. As uh, soon as the sample is tested, we'll uh, phone or, or text the results through so you'll get them as um, soon as those tests are finalised. Thanks, Ryan. Great. Thanks, Brad. Uh, look, the, the next one, few few particularly carriers, I, I think, were concerned that we weren't giving out any any sort of uh, delivery docket this year, so they wouldn't have a record of, of weights. Uh, is that the case? Um, again, no. Um, we are going to confine the paperwork that we do hand around, um, as I just said before, but we'll have a sample docket that goes around site and then uh, once we get onto the tearway bridge to leave site, a delivery docket will be handed out. Uh, so the driver will certainly have a copy uh, for those records to, to keep. Thanks, Ryan. Very good. And, and look, just one final one from me. Uh, you, you've mentioned each load does need to have a delivery advice. What what will happen if, if a truck does turn up without one? Will you be sending them home? Uh, we won't send them home, no, but we won't be able to process a truck without one either. Um, so going back to your question before, will it hold up the process? Uh, it won't hold up the process if we do everything right, but if um, if we're turning up without those forms filled out, we'll have to stop and uh, record all the details so that, you know, could provide a, a couple of inefficiencies there if, if people aren't organised beforehand. So we'll definitely process your truck. There will be advice forms on site, but it'll just take a little bit more time while the questions are asked and the details are recorded. Very good. Thanks for your time, Brad, and, and good luck for the next couple of months. Thanks, Rowan, and um, all the best for Harvest for everyone. It's uh, good to, to finally see a season after a few uh, lean years. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Uh, our, our next guest this morning is, is Glenn Neal, our area manager for Darling Downs region. Morning, Glenn. Welcome. Uh, good morning, Rowan. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, Glenn, I guess it's, it's, I hear it's been a pretty busy couple of months for, for you and your team in the region. Can you just give us a bit of a feel for what's been happening? Yeah, no problems. Yeah, the Downs team has been focused on preparing sites for um, the upcoming harvest night. Uh, this includes storage clean downs, uh, busy with staff recruitment and training at the moment. And um, with the storage is mostly empty, it's been a good opportunity to do a lot of maintenance on the silo complexes and machinery as well. So we're in an excellent position to offer the best possible service with most storages empty and ready to go. 
And uh, with limited sorghum carry at sites, there won't be much outloading during harvest. So that will improve efficiencies at our sites and um, also uh, reduce truck turnaround times. Very good. Thanks, Glenn. I guess, can you just give us a run through the, the sites that will be opening this year, what, what segs you'll be, be uh, taking and, and also opening hours, that sort of thing? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, we've got six sites open on the downs this year. So that's Brookstead. Uh, we're opening Clifton this year, uh, Dolby West, Maloo, Mulmerin and Warra. I'll just go through each site. Uh, Brookstead's all but empty. We've got a little bit of sorghum carry there. Um, we'll be taking all grades of wheat. That includes APH1 uh, with two tip-off points. So we'll have a tip-off point at the FS bins and Munro 1 for wheat. And we're also taking BAR1 and Commander Malt and uh, chickpeas as well. So we understand that could be a, you know, potentially short turnaround time between winter and summer crops. So Brookstead will obviously be prioritised for outload before sorghum harvest. And the uh, site manager there will be Graham Sutton. Uh, Clifton uh, is empty and ready to go at the moment. Uh, we'll be taking all grades of wheat there except APH1. And we're also looking at having a BAR1 bin available there as well. So as usual, the site manager there will be Jay Marriage. Uh, Dolby West, all grades of wheat, uh, also including uh, Durham. And we've got BAR1 SEG and the Commander Malt. So like Brookstead, this site will also be prioritised for outload uh, before sorghum harvest. And the site manager there will be Lisa Pomeroy. Uh, Malou, taking all grades of wheat also. Uh, BAR1 and chickpeas. Site manager there will be Brad Clark. Um, Mulmerin, also empty and ready to go. We'll be taking all grades of wheat there. Uh, we'll have three tip-off points, including a WA stacker for the dominant wheat grade. So the turnaround times there should be good. Uh, we'll also be taking BAR1 and Commander Malt, and the site manager there is Peter Turner. Uh, War is also open for all grades of wheat, uh, BAR1 and chickpeas. So all hoppers will be operational with recent repairs to the Munro, and the site manager there is Nelson Falaria. So um, operating time, so all sites will be working one shift with extended hours when required. So please opt in to our SMS service for site information during harvest and uh, feel free to contact me or your local site manager if you have any further questions. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Glenn. And, and yeah, to, to reiterate those words, please do do reach out if, you, if you've got any questions. It's, it's always... Uh, easier to clear things up before trucks start arriving, that's for sure. Uh, our next guest this morning uh, is Yako Vandermeer, our, our grain marketer for the Darling Downs region. Um, good morning, Yako. Welcome. Good. Thank you, Ron. Good morning, Ron, and good, every, good morning, everyone. Uh, Yako, I guess I thought I'd start off with with the question. It's it's probably been a few years since since most growers have have had much of a crop to deliver to their, their local grain corp site. Can you just give us a feel for, for what growers should uh, should tick off the checklist prior to, to delivering that first load to make sure they're ready? Yes, thanks, Rowan. Um, I think the first step is for growers to check the NGR details. If I say NGR details, make sure your login is there, check your mobiles, you know, your bank details. We want to make sure that if we make a payment and or contact you on something, that everything is up to date because all your data has been download from NGR to make contact with you or make payments. Um, the second one is Crop Connect. We'll touch a little bit uh, on it later on, but make sure that you, your, your password is updated, that you can log in. And if you don't have Crop Connect, download the app on your phone so that we can help you with that. And um, lastly is the delivery advice forms. And um, Brad has touched based on that. Um, if, you can, if you don't have it, call me, we'll email it to you. Make sure you've populate, you populate those forms, you put it in your truck, so when the wheel starts rolling, that you can have it there and everything goes smoothly. Thanks, Rowan. Thanks, Jaco. Some good tips there and, and certainly, uh, yeah, pays to, to be organised. Um, Jaco, I guess the, the next one I was going to ask you about, we, we've probably implemented a, a few new products and, and uh things over the last couple of years to, to hopefully make it a bit easier to do business with Grain Corp. Can you just give us an insight into, into some of those changes? Yes, Rona. The first thing is what we've done is um, we've given the growers an extra month of storage. 
So what, how we put it is we give you the month of delivery plus two extra month of storage. So if you start harvesting in October, we'll give you the month of delivery plus um, November and December free. And if you haven't sold it by then, you'll start paying storage from the 1st of January. And the second thing what we've done is we give you a two-day payment. If I say two-day payment, if you sell your grain on the Monday, you, you have to transfer it on the Monday. We should pay you by the Wednesday. And that is very helpful for if you need some urgent cash flow. Thanks, Ron. Great. Thanks, Jaco. Uh, look, the, the other one I was going to ask is, is just in your, your first comments, you mentioned Crop Connect. Um, if, if I haven't logged into my Crop Connect account for a few years or, or indeed if I haven't used Crop Connect before, what can I expect to, to find when I, when I log in there? Well, I see Crop, Crop Connect has basically two functions. The one is for grower deliveries or to manage your grower stocks. You know, you can log in there. You can see that the loads you've delivered, the grades, the truck regions, all that finer details. And you can even create a grower delivery report to summarize all your details. Um, the second thing is it's a marketplace. Um, you can log in there. You can look at bids and offers. You can pre-select buyers, buyers that you prefer above other buyers if you think they're more reliable or not. Um, and then you can also, if you've done a contract, you can also transfer your grain on that contract. And it's, as I said, it's all in all it's in the palm of your hand. You, you know, you can help yourself without picking up the phone uh, and asking someone to do something for you. So you can, the, the, the managing of your stocks, can you can carry it dramatically by just using Crop Connect. Thanks, Robert. Great. Thanks, Yako. And, and certainly would, would reiterate that, that, that Crop Connect's a great platform, gives you control over, over all of your, your stocks management and, and marketing of your grain. But do, do understand that it's not always for everyone doing it online. So I guess, Yako, I was just going to ask you, what, what alternatives are there if, if I'm not comfortable or I'm having trouble getting logged on or, or would like some help in, in how to use Crop Connect? What's the, the best option for me? Yes, Rona, we've got a team of people in Tamworth. Um, so we've moved them up from uh, Morong and also a team in uh, Wagga. So, but your first call will go to Tamworth. Sometimes if the lines are busy, someone in Wagga might pick up the phone. So just know if that happens, if it's just trying to help you out, that team can help you uh, transferring your grain onto contracts. And they can also help you um, log in to Crop Connect, setting you up, you know, creating your passwords, um, to, to make the process running smooth. Um, how you, for you to make contact with them, you can call 1-800-GRAINS or you can email them on growers at graincorp.com.au. Um, so that's, yeah, if, you, if you're making contact with them, they are very helpful and very, very energetic. So, um, yeah, please give them a call. Thanks, Rowan. Great. Thanks, Jaka. Um, Look, my, my next one, this, this isn't a new product, um, but, but not all growers are, are familiar with, with Croptimizer um, or, or have used it in the past. Can you just give us a, a bit of a quick explanation on, on what, what is Croptimizer and, and how it benefits growers? Yes, Ron, um, Croptimizer is a product we've, we've put on to help growers who's delivered one load or a few loads that's maybe just out of spec of his better grade of, say, wheat that is delivered. Um, the first thing is you need to have an eligible load. Um, second load, you, the second thing is you, there needs to be enough grower equity, so said money or, or great grades in the bank for you to be able to upgrade that load. And then the third thing is the stack average needs to be good enough for, to be able to absorb that load that's a little bit out of spec. Um, if I say eligible load, um, your protein needs to be not more out than 0.3%. Screenings one percent and test weights test weight two kilogram per hectoliter. So the, the next question growers ask is how will I know I've got a load that qualifies? Um, we will send you an SMS. There will also be contact numbers or, uh, on there if you still listen. Contact our grower services team and you can call them and you can upgrade that load. Something important to know is that you can only upgrade that load if it's still in your name. So if you if that load qualifies and you've transferred it into a contract into someone else's ownership, you will not be able to upgrade that load. Thanks, Ron. Great. Thanks, Shaka. I appreciate your time this morning and, and uh, Thank you. yeah, hope uh, hope the next few months go well for you. Yep. Thank you. Um, the, that 
concludes our, our presenters for this morning's session. Um, we, we do have a, a few minutes left for questions. So, uh, yeah, might might just go to, to a few questions from our audience. Uh, the first one I might throw to you, Brad, um, and that is uh, can a grower use their own delivery advice forms if, if they're providing the same information as, as a grain corp form? Um, no, we will need the, the grain corp form filled out. It's... Um, just the, the details on there is what's replicated in our system. So if there's anything missing from one of those other forms, um, we could miss it from the system. So we will need to use our forms. Great. Thanks. And, and I guess if, if a, a busy site's processing hundreds of loads a day, it's, it, it's certainly easier for them to have that, that consistent information being presented. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I think this one may have, have been covered a little bit earlier in, in your talk, Brad, but I'll, uh, I will just, just go back to it again. Uh, and that's just on the, the samples in Ziploc bags. Um, how, how big does that sample need to be? Yeah, um, one kilo or one litre, whichever um, way you want to look at it. So, you know, it doesn't need to be a massive sample at all, not a, a five kilo um, bucket type sample. So, yeah, a, a kilo. Great. Very good. Uh, look, I think that's it from, from our questions. So that, that concludes our, our webinar for this morning. Um, if, if you do have any follow-up questions, certainly encourage you to reach out to the appropriate people to, to get clarity pre-harvest. Um, we will be sending out a, a contact list of, of all the applicable contacts for your region in the next couple of days. So, uh, yeah, please keep an eye on your email for that. Um, and, and make sure you update those numbers in your phone if, if there have been any changes. Um, and I guess the only other thing from me is, is just wish to, to thank everyone for their attendance and, and wish everyone a, a safe and trouble-free harvest. Thank you.